Good morning, good evening and good afternoon all and welcome ladies and gentlemen to this fortnight's instalment of the Ish Plus 6 podcast, the podcast series where you can discover your next favourite artist. On today's episode I am joined by the one and only Leaf Tyler. Leaf Tyler is an East London based alternative indie artist who has really been doing his thing, switching things up within the underground scene. With bangers upon bangers already in his catalogue and his most recent release, Making Up Your Mind XP, dropping recently, he is definitely someone to keep an eye on. Please all welcome Leaf Tyler to the Ish Plus Six podcast. Well, let's go. How's it going, Leaf? Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> I'm good, brother. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm just here, man. I'm chilling. I'm living. I, I can't complain. You know the vibes. Trust I'm just, me. I'm just here, man. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, talk to me. Where are you coming to us from? I'm coming to you from Plasto, Newham, East London, in the cup. Yes, sir. Yeah, Jubilee Plast- line, isn't it? That's, that is the Jubilee, Jubilee line. Right? Jubilee. They're Jubilee and District. And then, yeah, that was, those are two. And then DLR as well. DLR is a cool one. But I don't live on a DLR, which 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 uh, makes me sad sometimes. But we'll be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, honestly, yeah. Do you know what? Because whenever I'm on the Jubilee line, I always go past Plisto, but there's, I I never, I've never gotten off there and there's ne- nothing, yeah. there, you know. I don't think I've seen yeah. anyone get off there of Plisto either. <laughs> there, there is stuff here, I promise. I promise to all the viewers, there is stuff in Plisto. It's just, it just depends. It's just a specific thing you got to look for really <laughs> I, I hear <laughs> it man do you know yeah. what I mean it's funny but yeah but, it's a vibe honestly man from the look of your from the looks of like your music videos and stuff it looks like it's <laughs> I'm not gonna lie if your music videos are recorded in Plisto it looks like the middle yeah. of nowhere <laughs> yeah yeah they're, they're, they're um once yeah well making up your mind is in Plisto and then yeah, the majority of stuff I do is in is it's just around about where I live. I feel like there's there's such beauty in that. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, it definitely it definitely definitely looks like that in the video for sure. Yeah, Thanks. I rate that. Yeah. We'll get into that a little bit later on. But um, yeah. you've you've seen every episode, of course. You know that we always start mm. off with a joke, and today's no different. Let's just get it out of the way, get into it. Reddit, da da da. Yeah. Alright, cool. I'm waiting to hear this. <laughs> all right cool let's let's get into it um why did the mexican throw his wife off the bridge why did why did the mexican throw his wife off the bridge tequila you know what yeah that's all right that was a good one right <laughs> it's, all right cool it's so are you reading it from like a page or something Bro, I just have a fat book of jokes that I just turn a page from every single day. And it's just like, hey, do you know what? Why not incorporate? No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, I just, bro. I steal them, bro. I'm not going to lie. I, I don't just yeah. sit there coming up with the joke. Yeah, bro, all great, all great artists, they steal, bro. It's okay. All great artists steal. But yeah, let's let's get into the main topic. Let's get into what everyone came here for. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the Leaf Tyler origin story. So I'll just okay. give you a couple of prompts. Like, where did the name Leaf Tyler come from? I have an idea as to where, but yeah, talk <laughs> to me about that. Talk to me about how you started making music. What oh. took you from where you were to where you are now, essentially? Um, You see, yeah, well, if we were to start a work when I started making music, I've always been surrounded by music growing up. My dad, my dad was a musician. What well, is a musician? Um, and he played drums in a rock band. So growing up, that was kind of always in the house. And then my mum also was a big, big, big music fan. But their tastes were very different. So growing up in that house was, was quite cool. So music was always exposed, but it was like, it was there would always be instruments around or like my dad would always have his drum kit and like there's so I've got like a plethora of photos of me on like a drum kit from very early so it was like not indoctrinated into music but very like it was there if you needed it and if you wanted it um but yeah the the two styles that my mum and dad had in terms of my dad's quite heavy like my dad you know it would be like Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, Jeff No Toll, like very like quite heavy bands and quite goated bands, you know what I mean? Like amazing bands. And then my mum would be a little bit more like 
Simon and Garfunkel, Mamas and Papas, Barbara Streisand, like um, Whitney Houston. Do you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. And so, so growing up with that mesh was quite was quite interesting. So I I, I quite naturally, well, not naturally took to music. It, it took me a while in my lifespan to to kind of fall in love or do music. I've always loved music, but like to kind of um, to do it, you know, as as an artist and to kind of like delve into it as Leaf Tyler. And and if you want to know the name, which is the next segue, but my name is Leaf. Yeah, so my actual birth name is is Leaf, L-E-A-F. Um, I always find it funny when people call me Tyler because I'm like, no, it's Leaf. But um, yeah, so that's my name and my middle name is Tyler. But yeah, I just thought, like great names, I mean, like great, great, you know, with all the goats that I love, you know what I mean? It was, it was, it was their names, you know what I mean? Like, you talk about Michael Jackson, you talk about Kurt Cobain, you talk about like, um, yeah, like Barbara Streisand, um, yeah, just there's a plethora of artists, you know, Freddie Mercury, you know what I mean? They all, I love, I love when people use their name, you know what I mean? I think that's it's quite powerful, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's not but... to say that the other, but like, bro, fuck me, I wish I had a cooler name in terms of like, like I don't know, Radiohead or some shit. I think that shit's cold. Like I think when the name is of of a band or something. But yeah, that's that's kind of the origins. And later in life, I kind of picked it, picked it up, and and especially like with the people around me, like growing up with Tendai and growing up with people and just being exposed to so much music and just more different different entry levels of music as well. You know, what I mean, like I did I did music at GCSEs absolutely crashed and burned in the theatrical side of music bro like <laughs> yeah. crashed and burned bro like there was no survivors in that bro like it was super like yeah but but i always loved the practical as- aspect of that so yeah it was always there it was just about like really really like taking that chance you know and just being like yeah it's this but yeah I don't know if that answers your question, but <laughs> that that's kind of like the origins of Leaf Tyler, really. Absolutely, yeah. man. Yeah, I will say. Do you know? What? I will say it's interesting you mentioned the um, artists and their names part because, yeah, like artists' names like Kurt Cobain, Barbara Streisand. You know, those aren't the kind of names that you hear just working a desk job uh, at a yeah. bank or something. You know what I mean? Like it's not. No, the I kind mean, of... like, I always. <laughs> I mean, I always thought that like. I think a name, a name is always special, but it's like a context can make a name crazy. Do you know what I mean? Like exactly what you said though, like working at a bank, if you met someone that was called that, you'd be a bit like, fucking hell, that's a sick name. Do you know what I mean? But like, I guess anyone can be gnarly in it. Like you can get a guy called like John Smith, but if he's like a crazy rock star, then he's like the coolest motherfucker ever. Do you know what I mean? Like John Smith is now a name, you know? I just have to know. But yeah, that's a good, good, good point though. Like, I can't imagine them working in normal jobs, which is jokes. Yeah, facts, yeah. man. Facts. And mm. you know what? Honestly, Le- Leaf isn't it? How did that name even like? What? What was? Bro, <laughs> <laughs> is there a story behind I that? that? All the time, bro. Like, because everyone has their theories. Like when they meet me, they're like, "Oh, like, oh, is your mum a hippie or is your dad a hippie?" And they weren't not hippies. You know what I mean? Like they, you know what I mean? My dad long hair you know what i mean plays the drums leather jacket like all that stuff like my mom super into like earthly things but it was like there's just other meanings like my dad has a meaning because my dad's super into like um medieval uh culture like he loves like books and like fucking just part of my language by the way um it's, like it's medieval... right, <laughs> you can you can swear on his fine Oh, well, now you say that, like, I'm joking. <laughs> um, yeah, like, he, yeah, he was just super into, like, medieval and, like, literature and stuff. So he liked the name because it was, like, I guess, like, not Gaelic or, or like, like very um, Norwegian, you know, like, we talk about, like, um, Vikings and all this stuff, like, very, like, random, like, cool stuff. And then my mum was just, like, I really like Leaf because I think that she, like, fancied a, uh, um, a, a a movie star growing up called Leaf or some shit like, I can't remember, but she the, the story changes every time, which is which is quite funny. But yeah, the name just yeah, 
it's just and then that kind of gave context to kind of shape me you know growing up like yeah i, I really like the name 100 <laughs> percent, man. yeah which is which is funny as well it's not a stage name <laughs> but it's like that's 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 the title right there leaf leaf tyler interview it's not a stage name that's what it's it not is. a stage name but yeah <laughs> but yeah man it was it was it's it's, it's cool yeah it's a cool name 100 percent, man cool 100. i want to um talk a little bit about your ep um that you dropped this year mm. leaf tyler goes all out guy um okay before we get into like the themes explored there, talk to me about that name, Leaf Tyler Goes All Out Guy. Explain that to uh, me. I, I don't even know if I'm saying it in like the correct no, cadence. You are, you or... are, you are. <laughs> no, I, I can explain that one. Um, so yeah, All Out Guy was this, because I'd always wanted to do a, the project and I'd kind of always had the songs. And it was, there was like some of the songs I'd done very early into my career um and then some of them i did quite a little bit more recently and i was just in this really point where i was just super into like i just wanted it to be the most outlandish the most like on the nose like i always say this thing called on the nose like i mean it's kind of self-explanatory but it's like it's not hiding away from what it is it's like like you're wearing a blue 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 jumper right now it's like if you was like, I love blue, I want you to put up to every function, do rag blue, trainers blue, like committing to something that's like on the nose or or or, or um, a, a stereotype, I guess, or, or something like that. And that was kind of the project for me. It was like, I was super into like, I was listening to a lot of, um, at the time I was just, I was just in my older stuff. Like I was listening to a lot of like, um, what was I listening to a lot of Nickelback and like just random, like crazy, like, music in the like late nineties, early two thousands, like rock music. And then what that looked like to be a rock star, you know, whether that's like the cowboy boots and the and and the sunglasses and the like thing. And it was kind of not a character that man I uh, created because I did that was kind of my persona and that was kind of how I was dressing at the time. And I just kind of wanted to make that live on forever as like an ode to myself of like when I think about like those artists you're know, bruce springsteen or a, a chris stapleton you know like all of these like very um striking figures within music in terms of like how they dress or you know i just kind of wanted to make the most boisterous music to go along with that like the most like rocking out like pop guitars like and that's why it was like leaf tyler goes all out guy because it's like it was a persona at that point and it was just like i was always a bit like oh like like i was always like oh, i really want my first ep to be like really personal and really like this and then i was like as i listened to this music i was like maybe i don't want it to be personal maybe i want it to be like something fun and something like don't get me wrong they're all songs that i mean and they come from such like delicate places that i've i've written about especially put it back like put it back is a very personal song and then Mr. Invisible as well. Mr. Invisible, I, I love that song so much. That's my favorite song on the project because it's it was like grunge, you know, like I'm a big my favorite band of all time is Nirvana. Like so doing an ode to that and just like yeah, I just really wanted to like have fun on that album or album, EP. Um and yeah, that was kind of the name. It was like Leaf Tyler goes all out guy, the same way it would be like, I don't know. Yeah, it was like a persona, but yeah, it was just all out guy just means I've gone, I've gone all out guy. <laughs> like I've gone, I've got, I've got a hot rod. I've got a big flipping, I've got golden rims. Like, I'm, do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, what do guys like, like objectively like fast cars and like, you know, pretty girls and stuff like, do you know what I mean? I was just like, do you know what? Leaf Tyler, separate thing has gone all out guy. So that was the kind of like ethos behind the project to answer you yeah <laughs> does that does that explain it <laughs> you know what honestly i'm glad you explained it because i was <laughs> i was adding commas here there and everywhere i was trying to like <laughs> <laughs> trying to make sense of it <laughs> yeah i was trying to is it like leave tyler goes all out and then 
guy like as in like the person's name is guy like he's chatting to a person called guy oh, like, <laughs> guy i never thought of it like that you know i never thought of it i really like that perspective because i never thought how people would read it like and every time someone says it to me i always think i wonder what their interpretation of it is and i'm like that that's really funny <laughs> the commas killing me i should have <laughs> i should have i should have been better with my um punctuation and my my grammar honestly yeah. man your aesthetic <laughs> is your aesthetic is your aesthetic you. you know what i mean it's trust me thank you yeah, bro man. thank you thank you i'm i'm, I'm glad you're rocking with it man 100 <laughs> percent, man i want to talk a little bit about the i suppose not necessarily aesthetic to repeat on from what i said earlier but more um to do with your i guess sound the world you created with leave tyler goes all out guy so mm. It sort of has this lost love slash DIY aesthetic going mm. from it. Um big time. Yeah, especially with the uh, with the cover as well. It's like yeah. one of those things that you would do when you were younger where you'd cut out pieces of magazines and stuff like that. Exactly. To, to a yeah. That's exactly. the vibe I get from the album cover. Yeah, big time. Talk big, to me about time. the vibe you were going for and um I suppose the uh, just aesthetic you were going for. What made you go with this DIY aesthetic? Um, I just like I I was at the time I was just getting really really into like I love it when artists take control of the art as well. Like I'm I'm super into like I feel like every level of personal input that an artist can have in the artwork, and I'm a big big cover art guy like I love artwork like some of my favorite albums I'm just like wow like that creatively is just such a moving image or text or anything like this so at the time I was personally like I was on photoshop like a madman bro that's one thing you understand like I was saying this to my to uh, one of my mates the other day I was like bro like I flipping went for it like I was on photoshop bro like and I was just figuring it out the same way I would build a song on Logic, I was in photo editing because I was like, cool, sometimes you're going to come across another artist that completely gets what you're on about. But I feel like sometimes no one is in your head. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can't imagine what you're thinking right now or you could probably describe it to me, but I don't, I don't think I would be able to, like, nail it. And I thought the only person... Like, I did multiple shoots for the cover art. Like, I did crazy ones. Like, I... Like proper like shot on film for one i did all of these ideas and at the end of it i was just like no nah, i feel like this needs to come from me so that's kind of like the driving force behind it and i was super inspired by like because one thing i love about the cover is that there's a faint if you can see there's faint um what's the word like a like a book like a booking school like with the lines yes yeah, yeah. so i wanted it to look like this was my school book and I've just slapped, like, and I've taped this flipping, you know, this character, you know, this, 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 like, the, uh, this, um, like a poster almost, like, yeah, I just, I just thought, and it was super, like, teen angst, and it was just cool, and I just thought, this is what someone would do sitting at the back of class, bored in, like, maths, like, they would cut out, like, a magazine, like, maybe, like, their favorite artist, like a Harry Styles or something, and stick it on like a book. And I just thought, just that DIY. And the thing is, what was so funny about that whole project is everything was DIY. Look about the music videos, like Mr. Invisible, which is literally one of, is it my favorite? Yeah, I would say it's my favorite music video I've done. That and Too Long um, and Making Up. Um, <laughs> I love that video. But yeah, um, Mr. Invisible was crazy because I just shot that in my bedroom like just me um i got my mum to help me for one bit but i feel like that just adds to it but like yeah i shot that and in too long um was green screen i did in my bedroom like i just wanted this to feel like yeah just a complete and utter like the artist is doing this you know i mean and i felt like that just only added to the music because it was like yeah the music to me was quite um not expensive, but expensive sounding, you know, like a lot of great musicians worked on it and, 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 and made it cool. 
I just wanted to make it DIY. I wanted to make it no, but it's it was in my it's in my bedroom. Like I made the stuff in my bedroom. You know what I mean, like all the time was made in my bedroom. Like Mr. Invisible. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of what I wanted to do with the whole DIY thing. It's just like this is just of not to be so crude, but a vomit of just creative ideas that in 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 some light I feel like can be very in, interesting and sometimes can be a bit over what's the word um, overstimulating but I just wanted to like there was a creative venture in my mind I just wanted to like vomit all of these creative ideas that I was having onto something which just happens to be all out guy that's why the, that's why everything was just DIY I was like no I'm doing it like get me on the laptop and I'm flipping cutting and pasting at stupid o'clock and that's kind of yeah, I, I just thought this is cool, and then everything that the aesthetic that I was that I love, even as an artist, when I saw that, I was like, when I saw the finished product that I did, I kind of like sat with it for like a day, and I was like, all right, cool, let me leave that, and then I came back to it, and I was like, if I was in a charity shop and I was going through all of these CDs, I would buy that one. That's kind of, and then I was like, yeah, I want that, and then that was it, really. Yeah. <laughs> Answered question. One hundred percent, man. That, yeah, that was uh, the DIY aesthetic of it, though. It was just like I just wanted to like creatively take control. One hundred percent, man. Yeah, just, yeah. And you know what? That creative vomit thing that you mentioned actually makes perfect sense because sometimes when you get like that, I guess spark or that bit of inspiration, you do end mm. up just going for it you know at stupid o'clock like you said it's like exactly yeah exactly man like i'll be a, i'll be in bed at like 2 a.m just scrolling and i'll be like wait a minute like let me, <laughs> let me pop out and do a little something, something on the laptop you know what i'm saying it's like yeah do a little something something do you know what i mean it's like why not like and that's any hour of the day as well like bro i'm creative creative strikes there's no time for creative strike like you'll be in bed literally as you said scrolling on some you're like into your like 111th scroll like and you'll just be like wait get up rest of the night you're doing some like you're billing it bro like and that that is one thing i love about creativity is you can't tell it when to turn on it will just like you can in some degree but I feel like a true, like, oh, let me do this. That has to find you. And you just have to be, I always see this great analogy of an antenna. And everyone uses it to do with music. Like, you know, just turn up and turn your antenna on and a great song will find you. You know, you don't go searching for the song. In some aspects you can, but I always loved that. Because, but I always love it also applied to every other artist form, you know whether that's, you know, your art, or whether that's like a kid who draws, whether that's a, a guy who's like, you know, even an electrician, I don't know, like there's art in everything, isn't it? And maybe that sounds a bit wanky, but I just was just like, I just think that can happen to anyone with that antenna thing at any time, at any point, anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I'll be on the bus and fucking, I have to <laughs> do something, do you know what I mean? But yeah, it's, it's, it's cool though, yeah. Yes, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about <laughs> some of the stuff that, so I, I suppose just some other stuff that's adjacent to your music. Okay. Um, I want to talk about something that you mentioned in the past. So I know that you've mentioned Iron Brew I and like sort of like a... <laughs> A liking to yeah. that, I guess. I don't know. Just yeah. like I, I, I want to talk a little bit about it. You said essentially, Iron Brew is the white man's ginger beer. Amen. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, let's dissect that a little bit. I yeah. Do you want, honestly, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. But let's <laughs> let's hear your take on the on the bar first before we get into it. Bro, do you know what it is? Yeah, I just had. I just always thought Iron Brew, yeah. It's just like, I fuck with Iron Brew, innit? Heavy. But there was something about Iron Brew that it's been around for so long. And I it, it first happened from, from I think, me and Tendai. 
because he's a he's a big ginger beer guy, yeah, as a, as a lot of people are. And he and I think we went into like a shop together, and I think he picked up a ginger beer, and I always picked up an iron brew, and it was just always just a laugh because it's like that's my equivalent of a ginger beer. I don't know why, but obviously I like I've I've, I've tried ginger beer. There's some ginger beers that I've had, like I think I was at um, a Caribbean barbecue recently, and I had like like that mad thing ginger beer that was yeah. great but like yeah like i don't know why i just always thought like because because to me ginger beer has been around from donkeys like it's been it's been it's been well it's a solid drink it's been there for time but then i'm also like bruv when was iron brew because iron brew's been about for time like donkeys so i used to be like nah they've got to be like they've they've definitely sat on a shelf next to each other for so long and i just always used to think that like, it's scottish i was thinking so i was just like bruv if i white like iron brew is a white man's ginger beer bro <laughs> thanks man but honestly I, iron brew, though. I think i was at where was i i was in um oh where was i i was somewhere i think i was in like a lid or something and they've done like a a, a pint glass a can of iron brew game changer bro Game changer. Yeah. I man. just yeah. That I was alright. But yeah, that's 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 iron brew, man. Fuck Facts, it. man. And honestly, do you know what? I love iron brew myself. There's but the <laughs> there's no reason for it to be that color. Like no. <laughs> I don't know who during the development like I love the color, but there's nothing natural that could cause nothing. it to be that shade of fluorescent orange. Orange, bro. Like, are we talking about the drink or are we talking about the can? The drink, bro. Like the glow in the yeah. dark. Equi- bro. Like I don't understand how it does that. Is bro, I don't. Do you know what? Yeah, man, man, man. Slow down on 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 sugar drinks, innit? Like you see, I am brew. Yeah. Anytime I drink that, I know that shit ain't good for me. Like <laughs> I just know it ain't. Like anytime a drink is orange, and is and it ain't orange juice. I'm a bit like, hmm. But but the thing is, is I feel like this is like such a segue into something else. But I feel like the fact that it's orange makes you understand the flavor more. Because when you think about like if I was to tell you what flavor is iron brew right now, like what what drink is that, bro? Like is that orange? Like what is that? It's neon flavored fam, like what is that? <laughs> <laughs> bro, that's what I'm saying. It's like if that drink was clear, like a Sprite or something, you would be so confused. Because to me, Iron Brew is Iron Brew is better because I, I never got brothers that drink LucasAid Original, in it. You see LucasAid Original, I won't I won't shun my shun my eye on a brother that's drinking that. But I'll also be like, you could have got an orange one though. Do you know, what I mean, like, and I just put like. That doesn't really taste like anything. Like, there's nothing to compare it to. And I feel like that's the same with Iron Brew. Like, I remember, like, I, I gave it to someone and they was like, oh, they just couldn't understand that it wasn't orange aid. And I was like, yeah, no, this is this is a whole different thing. This is like, this is toxic waste, like, orange aid, bro. Like, get to know, <laughs> like, but... I fuck with iron brew. Iron brew heavy. I've never looked at the ingredients. I probably should, but sometimes ignorance is bliss, bro. Exactly, man. Yeah, and to be fair, yeah, ignorance it does basically sometimes. it does basically taste like literally the color orange as well. Like, there's no other, <laughs> no other thing, bro. My question or questions essentially were, um, I'll, I'll give you three prompts, and so how do I explain it? I'll give you a prompt and you'll give me the white man's equivalent of it, essentially. That's what I want to do right now. We'll play a little game. Go for it. Go for it. I'm going to have to lock in. (laughs) (laughs) You might have to get a little bit creative. It's only three. I'm going to have to get creative, bro. Yeah. All right, cool. Go for it. So if jerk chicken is the black man's equivalent, what is the white man's equivalent of jerk chicken? Bloody hell. See. I 
I would be too easy to say roast chicken, but I'm gonna say roast chicken. I feel like that's what them man. That's what that's what that's what them man on. Jerk chicken for the win, though. I'll be honest. <laughs> but, but yeah, ro- probably roast chicken. That's what them. That that's what the rebuttal would be for that. Facts, man. And sometimes Just you need a lot, roast as well. A lot less seasoning. Jesus Christ. Nah, a man. Lot. But honestly, sometimes you need a roast, like those Tesco, the, the ones from Tesco, those ready baked ones, or those. Oh wow! Ones. You're going crazy in one of them. Is that it? Yee! I hear you're... it though. I don't. I don't use it. Like that's not the kind of thing I go for. But yeah, nah, hey, nah. Of it's... course not. But like, I get you though. Like it does have. There can be flavors. You know what I mean? But exactly. you know, yeah. I'm. I'm ready for the next one. If you've got another one. Yes, sir. All right. So. Let's go with the white man's beef patty. You know them Jamaican beef patties. Oh come on, bro! You know it's a steak bake though from Greg's though. Easy, bro. Come on. One hundred percent, man. I, I I was with my boy Matty Matty Koza recently, and he had never had a. He he said he had had a steak bake, but very young. And we was going bright, and I think it was like my birthday. We were just going to get to go, go buy some clothes and like get some get some cool stuff, and and me and me and my mate. He said we got a steak bake, and he was like, "What?" Like, he's like, "It's a steak bake," and we was tearing that up on the train. And I think recently he had one, and he just messaged us. He was like, "Man, them this steak bake thing crazy." I was like, "Steak bake, bro. Steak bake for the win." But yeah, come on, bro. Jamaican beef patty is the white man equivalent is uh, Greg's steak bake. Easy. Facts, man. Facts. And you know yeah. what? Yeah, it's funny you mentioned steak bakes because I swear you've mentioned like it being essentially the equivalent of biting into, I, I can't remember, like a volcano oh, or something. Oh, 100%, bro. What, lava? That yeah. is like, bro, that's like, I think more, I think I said something like the, the, the flames of hell or something like that. But, bro, you ain't experienced agony till you've bitten into like something hot, even a patty. Because sometimes patties be hot when man be getting them. You get her, and then if you get a little bit of gr- like like the juice that comes on your thumb, agony. It's, it's agony, curtains, bro. bro. It's cut, bro. It's curtains, like almost like bro. Like I don't even want this anymore. Like it's done an attempt on my life, bro. Like <laughs> an attempt on crazy, your life, bro. Like bro, when man be grabbing it, ah, bro, that is hot, you know. Like and it'd be so like like. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be pussying out a lot of the time. Like I'll be going into Greg's, like, yo, can I get the one from the back though? Like the, like the, like, like not the one that just come out, like the earlier, like, cause, cause I feel like the temperature it needs to be warm enough, but not scalding hot. If you get a fresh one out, you might as well leave that for two hours, bro. Cause that thing <laughs> there, that's, that's, yeah. that's a bomb. Cause you know, that's you're not wrong as well. Like you're actually, bro. That's wrong. a bomb ready to go off, bro. And, burn up your mouth and then you're done for the day bro yeah exactly and you're just there like the whole day <laughs> yeah just yeah that is that is hot bro that is heat exactly like, man. temperature heat as well i'm sure if someone like done a temperature check that's probably somewhere on the like scale of it being hot bro because different yeah. gravy literally yeah, literally <laughs> literally bro <laughs> all yeah. right last one the white man's fufu and egusi. Fufu and egusi so good though. Cause that's flavors though. That's Thanks, different man. levels of flavors. I'll give you a second. Take your time. Pie mash. Pie mash. The traditional pie is. mash. Like the like liquor pie mash. I think that's what them man would look at as like the way Fufu and Agusi is so like that's like culture as well and it's so like a homely dish and it's just like man could look forward to that. Like you're telling me if man was at man was at work or you was out and you found out that you had that at crib waiting for you, bro. Like so I would say probably a pie mash as an equivalent for a white Donny. Like a West Ham fan or something, just about to go to a game, a little cockney like he's gonna stop off at a pie and mash though, bro. Trust me. Have you ever had it? I have, man. Yeah, I have. Yeah, it's yeah, it's good. It's all it's right, good. still. It's all right. And I'm talking I'm not talking about no pie and mash with 
like gravy. I'm talking about the liquor, the green sauce, that thing there. Oh, really? I've never had that. Bro, that's the traditional thing. That's the thing I'm talking about. I'm not talking about no, no, like brown gravy thing. I'm talking about if you look it up after the thingy and you look up a, a British Cockney um, pie mash, you will look at it and be like, I'm not fucking eating that. But <laughs> It's good. It's really good. I feel like someone you should always try something once in it, but it's really good. And there's a great spot in uh, Walthamstow that does it. Really good spot. Really good spot. But yeah, that that would be that would be my that would be that would I think it's the equivalent. But I think I think I think there's more flavors more flavors in the Agusi and that, bro. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. Thanks, man. But Honestly, yeah. yeah, I I like um. I don't know. I like what Brits do in terms of like that. Because one thing that Brits can do is pastries. I will 100%. 1 million percent. Yeah. Didn't we invent the Cornish pasty or some shit like that? I don't know. Uh, but but probably, man. Honestly. Probably, the... bro. Anything, anything bread like or baked, it's all right. You know what I mean? But yeah. that's one thing I would say Brits. Yeah. Brits definitely do bake. Bakery. Very good. Very good. And fish and chips as well. But one thing I want to say is people need People should stop going central London to try British cuisine dishes. I feel like, don't get me wrong, there's a salt is needed. There is a lot of British food that definitely needs a one, two, all purpose seasoning, garlic salt, satin, you know what I mean? Just something else going on. But I do think that food is also locational. Like to me, you can go to a good chippy in 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 London, but you could also you the fish and chips is built different by the seaside. So I feel like if you're in central London and you're like in Soho or something and you're getting fish and chips, that's not to me that could be good. But I just feel like it's locational as well. Do you know what I mean? Like I hear that completely, and yeah, like you need you need the vibes associated with the food in order to fully appreciate it. It's exactly good. that's what i think it is a lot of the time as well i'm just yeah. saying it could also just be whack <laughs> i want to move on into the next question i know you've um in the past you've expressed an interest in late 90s slash early 2000s pop culture as we've you know mm. mentioned a couple of times over the course of this interview um yeah already I want to know what role all of that played in terms of forming the person and the artist you are today. Um, I suppose we can go into that a bit deeper into your music because I know we sort of touched on it a little bit earlier. Mm. But um, yeah, I want to hear what you have to say. Yeah, big time. I love like a big... Well, as soon as you say pop culture, I automatically think of Top of the Pops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Top of the Pops is a big one. I, I had to realise that a lot of the artists that I listened to growing up were based in that time. Like, to also give it, like, context of, like, growing up in, like, the 2010s, it was heavy, like, Black Eyed Peas and, like, you know, Rihanna, like, great, great music. And then I had to realise, like, when I was a baby growing up, like, what was I listening to? Like, what was the things that was, like, in the car or, or like, things that would, like, I would I would be into like my um my auntie she was she was my auntie's crazy like my auntie's so cool she was uh she was in a new metal band like she was like a heavy heavy metal uh she was a guitarist in the band and she introduced me to Evanescence yeah um I don't know if you can see it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah they introduced a great album but they she, <laughs> she introduced me to Evanescence and then I had to realize growing up like especially like when being in music again it was like what made me fall in love with music and it was those moments there whether that's at Evanescence or like first hearing um, Jeff Buckley or something like all of these artists that was around like not around when I was growing up because obviously it was before that but things I would hear growing up you know what I mean in the 90s or in early 2000s um, not so much Jeff Buckley in 2000s but like if we're talking 2000s it's like it's a lot with um, Busted is a big, a big, big influence on my music. Um, the band, because for the longest time I used to think they was American and I found out they were from South End. Oh, really? Blew my mind, bro. Blew my mind. 
I was not aware either, actually. That's crazy. Bro. Um, bro, when I found that out, it completely changed my understanding of what, like, man could make as a as a musician in Britain. Um, yeah, bro, like, finding out... And then even that album is so impactful to me in terms of, like, my brother... See, both my brothers were very interesting because my, my middle brother would listen to a lot of pop rock growing up as well. Like, he... He was the one that I used to like borrow the busted CD off of. You know, we took like year 3000, like all of those rhythms there. But then I really tapped in when I was much older, like two years ago to the actual album. And there's deep cut. Some of the, my favorite song is called Without You and it's by Busted. And that song, crazy. And it just gives even more context because it's like, oh yeah, they're, they're British. And I feel like when we talk about like 90s and, and, and early 2000s influence, like, of course, in the States, it was crazy. You know, you had like Blink and you had like all of these great subcultures that were coming out. But the UK also was doing some cool stuff back then as well. And it was like, of course, it's documented and we're all kind of like early 2000s now and stuff. But it was just, it's very nostalgic for me. And that's something that, really impacted my music to try and create something that is nostalgic to me through listening to songs and through creating music that's nostalgic for me I don't know but yeah that's um that's kind of what I get from that influence of the 90s and and um and early 2000s okay let's move on to sort of another segment similar to the previous one I want, I'm going to give you some categories and I want you to name your top three from each. And I guess we'll talk a little bit about it as well. So oh, oh, before we, we'll, we'll start with the ones that I imagine we'll have. Well, let, let's just, let's just get into it. Uh, late nineties, early two thousands, pop culture, video games. Tony Hawk, Tony Hawk pro skater, big one. Um, top three yes for me or just in general uh for you personally for me tony hawk pro skater one and two if underground if i could get that in there um simpsons hit and run big one what's that third one though what's that third one yeah grand theft auto san andreas of course, man. Yeah. Of course. I hear of course, it. That's... The flow, I had to. I had to. And I would say that in order as well. I would say Tony Hawk for me was was like one of the big ones in the 2000s. Facts. That's cold, yeah. man. That's cold. Yeah. Movies. Late 90s, early 2000s. Ah, you're killing me. <laughs> ah, you're killing me, you know. But do your top three is crazy. You can just name a bunch, honestly. You don't have to go like three to one right, or cool. you know my favorite film of all time is a knight's tale which is a heath ledger film it's not exactly cinema it's not like it's not the most like um you know it's not a cinematic masterpiece or you know it's not scorsese but it is so personal to me that film just because it has such a great story um and it's got heath ledger in it who's my favorite actor but yeah, growing up, that was kind of one of my favorite films because it was my dad showed it to me. It's medieval. It's a beautiful story about a peasant boy who pretends to be a knight in order to compete in the jousting competitions. It's just really, really like, yeah, really good. Um, really great quotes in that film. That would be number one for me. Oh, you're killing me, bro. <laughs> Um, 90s. I'm literally looking at my film collection right now, you know. So I'm have to say Human Traffic is a really good one as well. 90s film. Um, Human Traffic. And... Ah, oh, this is killing me. You're making me want to go on my letterbox, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, um, man. Bro... What's my third one? This is what I hate about top threes. But um, there's actually too many, too many options. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, you can just reel a couple I'll off. I'll say Jackass. Jackass. Why Jackass. Not? Jackass. Early 2000s. Jackass. Fairs, man. Fairs. What was the second one you mentioned? Human trafficking. What is that? Because I've never well, heard of that before. Human traffic is a... Um, it's a 90s... It's actually Tendai's favourite film. Uh, Human traffic. It's a... Um, it's like a British film. And it's just about uh, dr- like rave culture in the 90s. It's a really good film. Really, really good film. But just the way they do it is very... Um, yeah, it's very, uh, it's very glued on. It's one of the most uh, like visually and like just it's cracking film and it's just yeah check it out for sure it's a great watch 100%. i'd say i'd say that um yeah i hate top threes and it there's a lot more <laughs> if you gave me more time i'd be crazy i'd be getting nuts in this but yeah no i would have to say those though bands oh. slash artists sorry carry on if it if it wasn't 90s or 2000s juno Juno. Juno is a big film. Yeah, Juno is probably... When did that come out? Second. That was, I want to say like 2010, 2009. Just, oh. I'm just, I just wanted to let you know. And I just wanted to throw that film out there because that's a big one for me. But yeah, continue. Thanks, man. Yeah, I like Juno. Um, Juno is a good film, yeah. I wish that and, was early 2000s. <laughs> yeah, man, honestly. All but right, yeah. cool. Bands slash artists this is the one where things will get a little bit yeah <laughs> this, is, this is where you're killing me shock number one number one would be nirvana um then i would probably say who else am i thinking I even look yeah look at the wall man look at the wall <laughs> yeah, look at my wall really um yeah cool all right cool i'll say i'll say nirvana um, busted, and the Goo Goo Dolls. The Goo Goo Dolls. That's an yeah. interesting, interesting ensemble you've got there. <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting. Um, the Goo Goo Dolls. I love them. I love. I love what they say within music. That's the, you've obviously heard their stuff. I uh, do you know. What? I wouldn't be able to name you a song off the top of my head, but yeah. I've definitely heard their music before. Yeah, it's so funny because I'm now realizing that a lot of my musical influence when I talk about that is also so 2010 based as well. Yeah. So it's so funny that you say this because I'm also like, I'm like, oh yeah, them. But I'm like, oh no, they weren't 2000s or they weren't 90s. So I'm like, oh, damn. Oh, if, if I was to chuck in a fourth, they're very, very uh, underrated and not really like they need their flowers but it's the the sundays i really like sundays. sundays they're a really good band it's great great lead singer she's great um i think her name's harriet i forget her name but yeah she's great really great music um that is 90s and and i love their juxtaposition as a band i think they're very they're very important i feel like our generation will really like take to them and i think they already have but yeah the Sundays. 100%, yeah, man. So short term and long term, I want to talk a little bit about what we can expect next from Leaf Tyler. So short term until the end of the year, um, mm. early next year, and then long term, next couple of years. Talk to mm. us. Um. So right now, um, yeah, right now, I was in fir- short term and long term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so right now, obviously, I've just released um, a song, um, Making Up Your Mind, Great Rhythm, kind of opened up another kind of like avenue for me. Even just talk about that briefly, my brother really liked garage music growing up. Yeah. So that's a cool segue as well. But um, yeah, so I'm currently working on another project, which I'm very, very excited about. Um it's new, not new territory. It feels like what that first project was, it's like now my my Leaf Tyler project now. It feels very um it's personal. It's very it's very um yeah, it's very personal driven. So you're gonna expect a, an EP in the new year. Um and a lot of live shows as, as well. I'm gonna be doing some live shows. Um, but yeah, just building upon that, really showing off where 
I kind of grew up and what I'm what I'm about, you know what I mean, being from Newham, you know, growing up in East London. Um just kind of introspective on that, you know what I mean, and just bringing you into my world really of of Leaf Tyler even more um than I maybe already have or or or, or hope to. Um so yeah, a new project in the new year. Um loads of new cool songs that I'm really working on. It's going to be quite a varied uh, style as well. Bringing in like a lot of the still the like steppy garage stuff and a couple couple slappers, but I'm also going to be doing a lot of acoustic stuff, which I'm very looking forward to. Um, but yeah, just bringing that perspective and even just like bringing a little bit um, in terms of the step, in terms of the, the bass, a little bit of hip hop as well. I mean, that's one thing as well that man was going to mention about the 90s and 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 and, and 2000 stuff is it was big big bit of jay-z can't lie but um but yeah like just bringing that in bringing elements i just really want to make like a great great interest not even introspective just a great piece piece of music man um and put out some really cool stuff and that's kind of what i'm doing with building tell everyone that i'm building and it's just building my world and building the people within it and the people that I want to bring in. So, yeah, more Absolutely. music, more projects, more creative, um, and just some really cool stuff, man. I'm just kind of put out some cool shit. So, yeah. That's Absolutely, kind of, man. Kind of that's the, cold. The next steps, man. That's cold yeah. still. Um, my final question before I let you go on your way, Mr. Leaf Tyler, is, and I ask this question to everyone, you are heard by everyone on earth for 10 seconds. What do you say? You can change your stars. Yeah. That's what I would say. <laughs> do you want me to delve into it? Please. <laughs> <laughs> You probably saw the question marks in my head. Please, just <laughs> yeah. basically, um, nothing is pre, nothing is, um, you know, we talk about pre, predetermined, and um, when I say your stars is in terms of like those are things that are fixated, you know, like it's it's a quote from the film, you know, it's like a man can change his stars, but I think everyone can change their stars. It's like whatever you think you can't do, or whatever you think is predetermined for you. You can change them, basically. Do you know what I mean? And you can, you can, you can, you can follow that, and you can chase whatever that is, and you can change your own stars. You know, you look up at night, and you always see that star there, and you always see that star there. But you're like, ah, oh, is that all? Do you know what I mean? And I just feel like it's just basically self belief, man. And it's just like that's all I'm. That's what I'm about. You know, believing in yourself and and believing in the people around you, and just like, yeah, you can change your stars that means that it's just like whether that's regardless of predetermined you can just change the way the sky looks for you man like that's the way i look at it like you can you can you can really be like controlling stuff that's 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 what i would say facts man honestly yeah. not to even leave it too deep in it nah do you know what that's a good note to close off on and yeah you little listeners you can change your stars take that with you as you go through your day to day I think that is a good place to close off, mm. considering the time constraint. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, considering that. Otherwise, bro, then you're lucky there is a time constraint because hey, you're editing four hours of footage, bro. Easy. <laughs> hey, like man, that. it's calm. I enjoyed the conversation. <laughs> but yeah, I'll close off here at this point. I think this is a good place to close off. So, mm. listeners, watchers, experiences of the Ish Plus Six podcast, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for experiencing. Make sure you all go check out Leaf Tyler's most recent track on all platforms, Making Up Your Mind, XP. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all platforms. And also youtube as well please go check it out leaf do you have anything you'd like to say before we close off um yeah thank you for 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 the interview man great questions love the questions and um yeah stay rocking and stay yeah it's happening thank you man i've i appreciate it for real stay rocking guys mm-hmm
make sure you like comment and subscribe of course leave please tell the people to like and subscribe and read it all of that like and subscribe man come on you ain't gnarly if you ain't doing it bro facts they don't listen to me they might listen to you they need they need to listen (laughs) (laughs) yeah all right Um, thank you all for coming and yeah keep it real i will see you all later alligators peace